Why is it that some movies are just so rewatchable? And trust me, not all great films are like that. There are so many awesome and powerful films that only need to be viewed once to experience all of it. Then there are films like Stage Fright that have the right mixture of style, direction, plot, and music that make you want to revisit it time and time again. I love this film. And if you love it too, I can't wait to hear about your experiences with it in the comments down below. If you haven't seen this movie, well, stick around and find out why it holds such a special place in my heart. Welcome to the Hellbound Horror Show. Normally, I like to uncover hidden gems or find movies that not a lot of people talk about. I like to go in blind and see if a film deserves to be overlooked or not. I like finding these forgotten horror films, but tonight's review isn't going to be anything like that. No, Stage Fright isn't a forgotten horror film. In fact, it's a fondly remembered Italian slasher film. Think of this review as more of a celebration of the film rather than me judging to see if it's worth a watch or not. The film begins in an alleyway where a black cat is seen walking around. Some woman, presumably an escort, is smoking a cigarette when she's suddenly attacked. A crowd gathers in the street as they hear her scream. They tend to her dying body, and all of a sudden... What? The opening of this movie is actually a play being rehearsed on a soundstage. I was about to make some snooty comment how the alley looks like a set, but that's intentional. This is just the first of many misdirections in this film. After this opening, we are introduced to our main cast in a relatively short amount of time. It's brief, but the groundwork is laid and you get a good understanding of the assortment of characters. We have a director who is a bit pompous and controlling. We have a sassy and outspoken actor who acts as the killer night owl in the play. The flirtatious girl who is willing to do whatever it takes to move up in the world and a male and female couple. This girl is pregnant and the guy is ready to stand by her and the child. Lastly, we have the lead girl. She's injured her ankle, which could be detrimental to her career. She knows the director would have to fire her if he found out about it and he doesn't allow the cast to leave in the middle of rehearsals, so she and her friend sneak out through the back door to get her ankle treated. The closest hospital is a psychiatric hospital, which is, I uh, guess, good enough for the main character. After all... Betty, this is a mental institution. Psychiatrists are doctors too, aren't they? Little do they know, a mass murderer is being treated here, and spoiler alert, he escapes. This is something you're either gonna hate or love about stage fright. It's never a mystery who is doing the killings. This isn't a giallo where anyone could be the killer. This mass murderer is the killer and that's that. It's also not a typical slasher where we are given a big backstory about this killer. All we know is that this guy killed a lot of people, he escapes, and he kills a lot more people. It's simple, to the point, but it's also super effective and I love it. So the killer escapes, in their car, and then he murders one of the girls as the lead girl goes inside. Normally, in a slasher film, we don't discover the bodies until the end of the film. It usually turns into a big reveal party as the final girl begins to figure out where all of her friends went. In Stage Fright, they discover the body right away and they call the cops. What a novel concept. The police arrive right away. They check everywhere for the killer, but they can't find him. They think he ran off somewhere. They have a cop car sitting out in the parking lot all night just in case the killer shows up. It's all smart stuff. Inside, the director has a bright idea. Although the death of what's her name was horrific, they could use that publicity and get noticed. They could make a fortune if they changed the script a bit to reflect what actually happened that night. Sure, you become a real jerk if you take part in something like that, but everyone has been down on their luck. This is everyone's first job in a long time and they all really need the money. 
To be able to capitalize on this tragedy, the director decides that they all need to stay the night and rehearse all the changes so they can be ready in three days. The director is afraid of mutiny, so he makes his assistant lock the door to the building and then hide the key where no one can find it, so everyone's stuck inside. After the door is locked, the show must go on, so they decide to work on the assistant's scene. The night owl comes onto the stage, ready for the murder scene, but something is different. Something is wrong. Brett, the guy in the costume, is acting strange, and he has a knife. Come on, kill her! Kill her! Jesus Christ, what's the knife got to do with anything? <gasps> That's not Brett! Stop him! <laughs> Wow, oh, that was unexpected and awesome. It's a cool misdirection, and I love how everyone slowly begins to realize what's happening in front of them. As the assistant dies in their arms, they ask where the key is. She's too weak to say anything. Just like that, they are locked in the building with a psychopathic killer. The killer murders everyone one by one as they search for a way out, and I absolutely love all of it. I love the gory deaths. I love the killer and his mask. I love the characters. I love the style, the colors, the set pieces, and the dreamlike feel. This movie is so my cup of tea. The ending, with the killer sitting amongst the dead bodies with feathers flying, is so iconic, and it's the perfect amount of style, fantasy, and absurdness. Stage fright, like most beautiful Italian horror cinema from the 80s, focuses on style over substance. It's a beautiful film full of sharp cinematography, great lighting, and great set design. Acting, while good for this type of movie, isn't the best. Dialogue feels stiff, and characters, while mostly believable, feel a bit one-dimensional at times. But I don't watch these raunchy Italian slasher films for their characters. No, I watch it for the visuals, the gore, and the awesome soundtrack, and Stage Fright delivers in all the above. The biggest downfall for me is that there are a handful of shots that are a bit out of focus. It never bothered me too much as everything else is great, it's just something to note. Stage Fright was the directorial debut of Michele Suave, who was Dario Argento's prodigy for a little bit. Suave goes above and beyond in Stage Fright, and I look forward to seeing more of his films in the future. Stage Fright is readily available if you know where and what to look for. Stage Fright goes by many names like Deliria, Bloody Bird, Soundstage Massacre, and Stage Fright Aquarius. Blue Underground has a wonderful Blu-ray of this movie out. Shameless in the UK also has a nice Blu-ray available with a brand new 4K restoration of the film. Maybe that 4K restoration could mean that Blue Underground 4K release could be in the horizon. It would look stunning in 4K. So if you haven't seen Stage Fright, I highly recommend it. I personally think it's a blast. It's a really fun and solid movie, and I enjoy everything about it. Movies like this make me so grateful that I have a platform like YouTube that I can share my passion and love for horror films on. Thank you all for making that possible. And that's all I have for tonight. So as always, thank you so much for watching. Stay healthy, stay safe, and take care, everyone.